Hello viewers, welcome to another video. In this video, we will be going to understand why it is very important to do the winding insulation test. For this, first I will explain what is insulation in the world of electrical. And then, obviously, what is good insulation and what causes the insulation to deteriorate and afterwards what are the methods to test the insulation and finally how we infer the insulation test results. To begin with every electrical wire in the plant whether it is a motor, generator, cable, switch or transformer etc is carefully covered with some form of electrical insulation. For example, in the motors, the windings are covered with the enamel so that every loop of the winding is insulated with another loop. Here you can see another type of the insulation which insulates the winding from the core of the motors and also this type of insulation is used to insulate different phases in three phase motors. When it comes to the cable, all the three cores in the cable are insulated with each other and also the whole cable is insulated either via PVC or XLPE insulation. Now we need to understand what is good electrical insulation. So I will explain the concept with the help of this analogy. The purpose of the good insulation around a conductor is much like of a pipe carrying a water and the concept of electrical insulation can be best understood when we see the comparison with the water flow in this pipe. The pressure developed by this pump causes the water to flow through this pipe. If there is a leak in the pipe, the water will leak from this hole and the whole pressure in the pipe will also drop and also the water flow will not remain the same in the pipe because it leaks through the hole. Similarly, with electricity, voltage is like a pressure pump causing the electricity to flow through this conductor. Obviously, this conductor has some resistance but it is far less than the resistance of the insulation which helps the current to move along this conductor. But if we have a weak insulation, the current will leak through that point and ultimately will result in the low current to the load and also the voltage drop in this point and more the current leaks through this point the more heat it will develop across this point which further damages the insulation and ultimately will cause major damage. It is to be noted here that no insulation in the world is perfect or no insulation has infinite resistance to the current. So some electricity does flow through the insulation and through the ground and this leakage current is the basis of insulation tester. Now to sum up our answer to the question that what is good insulation, we have seen that essentially good means a relatively high resistance to the flow of the current through the insulation. Now coming back to the very important concept that what causes the insulation to deteriorate or what makes the insulation go bad. When your plant, electrical system and equipment are new, the electrical insulation would be in the top notch shape. But as the time passes and they expose to different enemies of the cable insulation, the insulation is subject to many effects which can cause it to fail. For example, electrical overloading. Obviously, if the cable is under designed, the continuous flow of high current 
will cause the increase in the temperature and that increase in the temperature will damage the cable insulation ultimately. Another enemy is the mechanical failure. For example, if you accidentally cut the cable insulation. The next is the moisture and the dirt and this is the environmental effect on the cable which continuously weakens the insulation and ultimately damages it completely. Another reason of insulation failure is the excessive heat or cold. For example, if the cable is designed for the operating condition and if we operate this cable in excessive temperature, rather heat or cold, then obviously it will affect badly on the insulation of the cable. So this is the weakening process of insulation of any electrical cable. These are the enemies which start to deteriorate the insulation of the cable and as these enemies of the insulation are at work, as time goes on, combined with the electrical stresses, they produce pinholes or crack in the insulation and in the presence of moisture and foreign matter penetrate the surface of the insulation providing a low resistance path for the leakage current and once started the different enemies tend to aid each other permitting excessive current through the insulation and weakens the whole cable and electrical system. After knowing so much about the insulation and the causes of insulation failure, what we need to do in order to prevent this damage and to know the condition of the cable before the time. The answer to this question is obviously the insulation resistance test. If such test is not performed in time, a motor or the cable with the poor insulation may not only be dangerous to the touch when voltage is applied but also be subject to burn out. Therefore, we need to do this insulation test periodically on any electrical equipment. The basic instrument for this test is the MAGR and this is the equipment used to test the resistance between any two points separated by the electrical insulation. Here you can see that this measure can be used to test the insulation resistance between the cores of the cable and between the core and the earth. I will not go into the detail of the working of insulation resistance test, but we will understand how to interpret the resistance values shown by this MAGR instrument. As a thumb rule, the minimum acceptance level for the resistance values or the MAGR value is 1 mega ohm for 1 kilovolt voltage rating. So as the voltage rating is increased, the minimum acceptable level of the resistance values also increased. But one big mistake we normally make is we only rely on the single value of the resistance test. It's very important to maintain a trend of the equipment and then by using this table, we can look at the trend and infer the condition of the equipment. For example, if the MAGR values for the equipment is fair to higher values, but it is well maintained over the time, it means that you don't need to worry about that equipment. That equipment is in perfect condition. The previous values were fair to higher values, but now the equipment show constant lower values of the resistance or the MAGR. It means that still the equipment is in good condition, but you need to look out the reason for the downward trend of resistance values. Similarly, if the MAGR values are above the minimum acceptance level, but they are very low, but they are well maintained over the time, it means that the equipment is in good condition, the insulation is in good condition, but you need to look out the cause of the low values of the resistance. And this is how 
you interpret the resistance values that you read from the MAGR. I hope you clearly get the concept of insulation resistance test and why we need to perform this test and what is the good insulation. For more interesting videos, stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe our channel. Thank you for watching.